Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So in this video, we're going to create these accent shapes that come up from your text animation as soon as the text pops on. And it's just a cool little extra little uh, you know element that you can add to your text to make it pop a little bit more and add a little bit more characteristics to your titles. So let's go ahead and let's get started. I'll show you really quick how to do this. It's very e easy, obviously. So let's go over here to a new composition. I already have some text in here and a background. I have a gradient ramp on the background, uh, but let's just go further here and let's start animating our text once you have that in here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go to the drop down here, go to the animate icon here, and I want to click on position. And this will allow me to create a very dynamic animation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the position to go outside of the composition here. So I'm going to, go to the Y position and drop this above our comp. And obviously, you know, we can't see anything. So, you know, don't worry about it. We're getting there. And let's go to the range selector one. Let's go to the start percentage. And now you see we can start bringing this down. Our text starts popping in. So that's really cool. So let's add a keyframe for start. Let's move forward to maybe a second and a half. And let's set the start percentage to 100%. And let's make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on the keyboard. And nice. So now we have our text in there. It's looking rather cool. All right, and not bad. So let's go ahead and create a drop shadow that will make this look kind of three dimensional. So let's go here, let's duplicate our text layer by going up to edit, duplicate. And we can bring this new layer underneath our original and we'll rename this to shadow. And then we'll go up to effect, perspective, drop shadow. And from here, we're not gonna do anything else for a second. We're going to make this layer a 3D layer and click on shadow only. And then from here, we're gonna hit R on our keyboard for rotation, and we're gonna change the X rotation to about negative 70-ish degrees until we kind of have like this three-dimensional look here. And as we see, we come through here, we have a little bit of an issue with our, you know, our position. So what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna do a couple things. So we're gonna go into the shadow properties here, go to animate, and we're gonna add ourselves a blur, okay? And from here, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're going to just increase the blur until we really just cannot see this anymore, right? And then we're gonna go into the range selector, add a keyframe for start, go to the last keyframe there, add a second and a half, and we're gonna add the start to 100%, make the last keyframe an easy, easy keyframe. Now the shadows will kind of just come on one by one. And you know, this looks pretty cool. You really can't see the shadow mark there in any way. So that's looking cool. And then let's go ahead and add a skew property to this. And from here, we can skew the drop shadow in either direction. I'll go to the left or right. So kind of be like a little bit of lighting dimension, if you will. And it'll just look, you know, in my opinion, really cool. So now we have a nice, you know, 3D sort of background here. Not, not really 3D, but 3D drop shadow. And if we need to, we can also, you know, play with the arrows here. Like just go to arrows on your keyboard and kind of just mash that up to be right behind the text. And yeah, that looks really good. So now we have like this three dimensional, uh, you know, lighting that's going on here. So it looks good. And now we can come here and work with some of the shapes that we talked about for this tutorial. So let's come over here and let's just add any type of tool. Let's add the polygon tool and just come over here, hold down shift on your keyboard and control out a, uh, you know, shape like this. And you get a new shape layer. I'm using the color black. You can use whatever color that you want. And from here, We'll go ahead and go into the properties. We'll go into the transform polystar one, and we want this to pop up for this side kind of as soon as the shape pops in, right? As soon as the first word comes in. So we'll go ahead and add a keyframe for position and scale, and we'll set the scale down to 0%, and we'll move the position over to be behind our first letter here, and then we'll move forward in time. So maybe like another second and a half, and we'll have the position come out and maybe have it come up a little bit. And we'll bring the scale up to 100%. And we'll make both of these keyframes here in the middle easy, easy keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. So now, boom, we have this nice shape. And then we'll want the animation to continue forward here. So if this was already moving up. We'll kind of add like this nice track. And then we'll set the scale to 0%. So now we'll have this constant animation in here. And of course, let's go ahead and make this layer go underneath our text layer. Just so when it pops in, it's kind of just like there. And now that we have our basic animation here, we can go ahead and start duplicating this and speed up our process of doing it. So first, before we do that, let's rename this to, uh, what's this? This is my left, call this left shape one, and there you have it. 
maybe one other extra property that we'll add in here. We'll also maybe add a rotation property in here just throughout the entire thing and just add like a slight, you know, rotation to it. That's cool. All right, let's go ahead and let's duplicate this layer and let's go ahead and close the original one up, go into the new one, go into the contents and you know, maybe real fast, instead of actually just recreating a new shape, let's turn off the fill by clicking the word fill at the top, set it to none, click the word stroke, set this to solid color. And now we'll just need to offset this. So we'll go ahead and hit U on your keyboard to bring up all the keyframes, select all of the position keyframes, and you can come here, bring it down. And basically it'll kind of all shift a little bit and you might just need to retouch the position keyframes to get that you know, nicely in place. So coming in from the text, and you know, maybe this one, instead of going up, it can go down. So, you know, now you kind of have this nice position here. And of course you can offset it by a touch just so it doesn't look exactly the same. And now we've easily created a second shape. So we can go further here. Let's create another shape completely different from a polygon, duplicate the layer, go into the contents and we'll go into our shapes here at the top and let's grab another tool. Let's grab a rectangle, right? So just go here and just draw out a rectangle or actually this is more of a square. I'm holding down shift on my keyboard to create a square. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Polystar 1 and Rectangle 1. And we're going to delete the Polystar Path 1 and select the Rectangle Path 1 and bring this into the Polystar 1 uh, shape layer there, right? And just delete the Rectangle 1 completely. And now you'll have this rectangle in here. Of course, we need to go ahead and hit U on our keyboard for position and we need to offset our position keyframes. So maybe this one be in the middle and we'll just do a little bit of offsetting to help, you know, with the shape. So now, with a little bit of a changing, we have the shape in here. And what's really cool about the, you know, the polygon tool, which looks like a uh, hexagon, is, is that if we can just come here and duplicate it, right, bring the new one to the top, go into the contents, go into the Polystar 1, go into the Polystar Path 1, and we can change the number of points down to like three. So now we have a triangle. So now we come here and you know create a triangle, right? And actually, if I come here really quick, we we just created a square, but you know, I was just showing you how you can use another tool. We can come here to the points and we can just use a square just like that, right? So we could have done that to save some time, but you know, obviously using the polygon tool, you have a lot more options depending on what shape you want. Even if you want a circle, you can just increase the number of points like crazy. Right, so that's why the polygon tool is probably one of the best tools here inside of you know the shape layer capabilities. So let's come over here and we can just continue to animate this layer. Okay, so let's say we want to duplicate this design for the other side here. What we can easily do is we can take all these shape layers here, duplicate them, bring them to the top. I would you know change the color coding of this in the timeline, so we'll just change it here. And then we, what we can do is go to layer transform flip horizontal. Now you'll have the same animation on the other side and you can just change the shapes if you want. And what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and offset this by a little bit so they'll come in when the next, when the last, uh, you know, letter comes in. So maybe right here and I'll start coming in. And now you have the duplicated shapes very easily on the right side. And make sure to turn on motion blur for your layers here and definitely, and turn it on at the top. And cool. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of, you know, background animation here. So in our original comp here, we've had a nice little background design here. I just to kind of make this tutorial go a little bit further. So what we can do is go up to layer, new, solid. And I'm going to take the eyedropper tool and just select a nice portion of our background. We'll call it BG shape. And from here, what we can do is grab like the polygon tool. And we'll just come from here, we'll come from the center here, hold down shift and, you know, just kind of draw out a perfect polygon like this. Now we'll go into the mask one here and we'll hit a uh, command T on a Mac or control T on a PC. And this will give us the transform properties here and we can hold down alt on our keyboard. Oh, sorry, hold down control or command on your keyboard. And you can just kind of start to customize the shape a little bit. And there we have it. So now we kind of have a shape here from the middle. Bring this layer underneath everything except for our background layer. And we hit T on our keyboard for opacity. Bring down the opacity maybe to like 20% or so. And now we can kind of see what's going on here. And let's go ahead and animate this in. So 
will have it animate in from the beginning. So go to the mask, go into the uh, mask one. So what I would like to do here is add a keyframe from mask expansion, move this keyframe forward in time, and increase or decrease the mask expansion all the way to where you cannot see the original shape anymore. So this comes in, and now we have our shape here. Let's go ahead and let's duplicate, or sorry, let's make this last keyframe an easy, easy keyframe. I'm talking a little bit ahead of myself. And now let's go ahead and duplicate this layer, and we'll bring go to the original layer down here, go back into the mask, let's duplicate mask one, let's set mask two to subtract, and we'll come over here to go to the last keyframe where it says mask expansion, and let's go ahead and decrease this by a touch, and now what will happen is we'll kind of have like this nice border outline here, and what we can do here is offset the original layer by a little bit, so now we'll have like this outline that comes on and then it'll get filled up like this. So now we'll kind of have like this nice little shape animation just messing around with the mask here. And make sure to turn on motion blur for every layer inside your composition. Make sure it's turned on at the top. And let's go ahead and let's render a preview. And after a quick render, this is what we have. And a little bit of cool shape animation. So hope you guys found this video insightful. If you guys did, please drop a like. Subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And as always, I hope you have a good day.